Welcome to part nine of our George Bridgman study night. Tonight, we're going to be looking at the torso, so let's get into it. The thorax, or chest, is composed of bones and cartilages. It is designed not only to protect the heart and lungs, which it contains, but also to allow the whole mass to be turned and twisted with different movements of the body. This cage is formed at the back by the spinal column, on the sides by the ribs, and in front by the breastbone. It protects the heart and lungs as a baseball mask protects the face. Its structure is yielding and elastic, so that it may serve as a bellows. The ribs are not complete circles, nor do they parallel each other. They incline downward from the spine and bend to an angle at the sides to take forward thrust toward the breastbone. The breastbone is called the sternum. If each rib were rigid and circular, the chest would be immovable and no chest expansion could take place. According to Kiel, the breastbone, with an easy inspiration, is thrust out one-tenth of an inch, allowing 42 cubic inches of air to enter the lungs, and this may be increased with effort to 70 or even 100 cubic inches. The pelvis is the mechanical excess of the body. It is the fulcrum for trunk and legs, and is large in proportion. Its mass inclines a little forward, and as compared with the trunk above is somewhat square. The ridge at the sides is called the iliac crest, and this is the fulcrum for the lateral muscles. It flares out widely for this purpose, rather more widely in front than behind. Abdominal arch. If you have made a little mannequin of lathe and wire, like the one we have described in an earlier chapter, you will note there is no bony structure between the blocks representing the chest and the pelvis, other than the lumbar or flexible portion of the spine, which is represented by a strand of wire. In front, the top of this middle portion of the torso is bounded by the line of the false ribs which arch outward and downward from the end of the breastbone, forming the abdominal arch. This arch, the curve of which varies, separates the thorax from the abdomen. Below this arch is the most movable part of the movable portion of the abdomen. It is bounded below by a line passing approximately through the anterior points of the iliac crests. Its profile shows the lines of the thorax cone diverging downward. When the body bends and twists, the central line of this portion bends always to the convex side, paralleled by the borders of the rectus muscle. So what George is talking about is that that concave line is the line that goes outward, not inward. So it's, it's arching from the chest and the stomach, not the opposite from the back. And he's also talking about the, the, uh, the lathe, the bricks of lathe connected by a wire. Everything we learned from chapter one of the study night, which is building. And that's what we're doing here. So as you can see, that concave line that's going from the stomach to the pelvis, not the opposite from the back to the, the, uh, the buttocks. So the, the, these are big masses building, attaching the shoulders, and learning about the torso. So those those are the two main masses right there: the pelvis and the chest, the movable masses, and the head. But we're just we're just focusing on the the torso. So here is what we learned from lesson one in building. We got a twist here. And this is something that I'm not sure is explained. So there is my reference that I'm drawing from. So he has two angular points from the top of the shoulders to the to the hip and then two triangles in the hip. I am not sure what that is for. If anybody knows what that's for, please please comment in the comment section to let us know what was going on. I mean, it helps. It helps a lot. But I don't know what what it's for. I don't know, understand the the explanation for that. Unless it's in the in the notes that I just read. But I just don't know. So here I'm going in with building again. And I'm going to apply the same thing. There's my arch. 
my concave arch out in the front and there there's that that and that I don't know what that's for but if it helps in the, in the drawing then I'll, I'll put it in and maybe it's some kind of uh, muscle memory marker to help you in your in your drawing I don't know but I might have looked over it in my notes. I don't know what George is talking about. It doesn't really explain it that much again. So in part one of building, I did the accordion and I didn't know what was the meaning behind it, but here it kind of explains it more on how the, the abdomen bends on each side. It's almost like an accordion. Movement of flexion and distinction occurs almost entirely in the waist or lumbar vertebrae, while movement of the side bending occurs throughout the whole length. Movement of rotation occurs in the lumbar vertebrae when the spine is erect, in the middle vertebrae when it is half flexed, and in the upper vertebrae when the spine is fully bent. In the lumbar vertebrae, the axis of this rotation is behind the spine. In the middle vertebrae, it is neutral. In the upper dorsals, it is in the front of the spine. Each vertebrae moves a little and the whole movement is the aggregate of the many little movements. The shoulder blade or scapula spade slides against the surface of the cage of the thorax in any direction and may be lifted from it so that its point becomes prominent under the skin. Easily 50% of the entire movement of the shoulder is produced by the scapula. The mass of the torso presents the great rear to great wedge, its apex downward, marked by the lesser wedges in the diamond. The mass of the torso presents from the rear a great wedge, its apex downward, marked by many lesser wedges and diamonds, and by the shoulder blades. The profile of these sides presents a wide, incomplete wedge whose lines, if prolonged, would form an apex below the buttocks. The surface of the back presents a great wedge whose base is at the corners of the shoulders, the apex driven between the buttocks, betrusted on the sides by lateral masses of waist muscle. Adding the neck, this form becomes a diamond with a very blunt top. With the torso and profile, the mass of the pelvis and abdomen slopes upward and forward. It is marked by the iliac crest and hip. It may be flattened in front by the contraction of the abdominal muscles. The hip moves freely over its surface, changing the tilt of the pelvis. Between these, the central mass contains the lumbar or waist vertebrae. Practically all the movement of flexion and extension for the entire spine occurs here, and much of the side bending. This mass is marked by a buttress of lateral muscles, Slightly overhanging the pelvic brim, it changes greatly in different positions of the trunk. From the back of the torso presents many depressions and prominences. This is due to its bony structure and to a number of thin layers of muscles which cross and recross the back. So as I begin this new drawing, I'm going in and revisiting everything that we did in our previous chapters from building to rhythm to distribution of masses to balance everything we're putting into play right now into this drawing and there's a lot going on in this torso subject and it's it's a, there's a lot of information and you really need to go back and, and reread and study what George is talking about because it, it, it is really hard to, to connect the text to the drawings. So we as artists have to help each other out. So if anybody has, you know, any input, just leave it in the comment section and it'll really help us all out. And uh, I hope you have your pencil out. I hope you have your paper out with me as we we draw together and, and learn learn about the torso and learn about the back and the front and, and all the good stuff and all here I'm 
going in with a quick study with my building, balance, rhythm, and just learning about the back, feeling it, being with it, revisiting George's, George's philosophies and teachings, and just having fun with it, because that's the whole point, is to have fun, to learn, to get better, and to be a stronger artist, and to never look back. The superficial or outside layers of these muscles manifest themselves only when in action. So under all changes of position, it should be remembered that the spine, the shoulder blade with its acromion process, and the crest of the ilium are the landmarks of this region. The acromion process is the outer corner of the shoulder girdle, the high outer extremity of a ridge rising from the shoulder blade. The back of the torso is divided vertically from end to end by the spine which, when bent, presents a series of knobs the tips of vertebral spines, and when erect, a groove accepting at the root of the neck. Here the spine of the seventh cervical vertebrae forms a sort of ridge pole from muscular tendons for the neck and shoulders. Around it there is a flat, unbroken fascia without muscular fibers, forming a lesser diamond nestling below the upper apex. So, I think I learned something out of this there's a lot of technical jargon that that really i couldn't resonate with but i kind of got it as far as you know the shoulder blades are the main the main points here the prominent points and how it moves and and how it how it's in rhythm with the rest of the muscles but it's an awesome, awesome drawings of backs and in the front, the torsos, and it's uh, it's fun to do. And and I hope you got something out of this one. I mean, I, I really don't think I did a very good job of explaining what George is trying to say because I, I really don't understand it myself. So if anybody is watching this and has a better understanding and can help us out, just leave a comment in the comment section. Leave a like. And if you like these videos, take a minute to subscribe and hit that subscribe button because it helps me with the algorithm, helps me grow as a small YouTube content creator. And it, it inspires me to do more. And we're almost finished uh, with this series. I, I have two or three more chapters left in this series. And it's been a blast. I mean, you know, everybody has been really receptive and everybody has been so supportive in the comments, in the subscriptions. And just please just keep them covered because it really, it really makes me feel like I'm doing good as far as helping you and me helping myself too, you know, at the same time because I'm learning along with you. 